Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo Academy, the show where we teach you how to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So if you want to get that, make sure you stay until the end. Also, if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, make sure that you jump into the description, click on the link there and download the sample files. Also, if you do not own Luminar Neo, make sure you use the link in the description together with the discount code so you can get the best deal on your new purchase. And finally, we would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to color match directly in Luminar Neo. More specifically, I'm going to show you how to match the luminance, color and saturation. This video is building up on the recent release of the portrait background removal tool. It will help you with the edit and it will improve the final result. If you haven't used the portrait background removal tool before, we have a full tutorial available on our YouTube channel right now and you can follow the link in the description of the video or you can also click on the link in the top right corner of your screen. Now, as you can see, we have everything ready here. We are in a Luminar Neo, we are in a catalog module and we are looking at the sample files. If you want to download the sample files and follow me along, all you need to do is to jump into the video description Click on the link there and that will bring you into our Dropbox account. From there, you can simply download the files and do the edit on your own computer. So to start with, we're going to start with this image. All you need to do is to click on it, select it, and then click on the edit on the top of your screen to bring it into the edit module. So what's the plan for this image? First, we're going to remove the background by using the background removal tool. Then we're going to replace the background. And in a third and final step, we're going to color match the model with its new background. So how are we going to do this? First of all, removing the background. So for that, let's focus on our main toolbar and more specifically on the layer properties. You need to click on that to open it. And then on the top, there are two tabs, properties and masking. So click on the masking and in the list of masking tools, we have the portrait background. So now click on that. So it takes a second to recognize the image, use the AI to select the background. And once it's ready, it will bring a new button with the remove sign on it. Click on the remove to remove the background and have it ready for future editing. Now, as you can see, it did a pretty good job. So we don't have to worry about any adjustments. However, it's always good idea to zoom in and just double check the edges to see if you're happy with the result. Now I specifically pick this image because I know the result will be good so we can move on. The next thing we want to do is to replace the background. So how are we going to do this? For this, we're going to use the layers panel. We can click on a plus sign and we're going to bring the new background into our Luminar Neo. I already have it here. However, if you want to do it, simply click on load image, then locate the background, click on open and it will open in my images. Once it opens, simply click on it and it will take a few seconds to be inserted in the layers. So now, as you can see, we have the new background as well as our main subject. While we're here, let's turn our attention to the main toolbar where we have the layer properties. Let's start by increasing the opacity to 100. And to fill the frame, we can use one of the new image mapping options. And for this case, we're going to use the fill. So it keeps the same ratio and fill our frame. Now, of course, we need to move the background behind our main subject. So to do that, we come back to our layers panel. We simply drag and drop the layer under our main subject. Once that that we are done with the background removal. So let's go back focusing on our main subject. Now we want to adjust it and place it wherever we want on the screen. As you can see, when we select the layer, now it has a blue frame. And when I hover over the image, it has a little hand that you can use to move the subject around. You can also use the little white dots in a corner of the subject to adjust its size and ratio. So let's just adjust it to something we like. And I think about this size is right. So once we're happy about the position of the model, 
we can move to the third and final step, which will be the color matching. Now to color match the subject with its background, you need to match the luminance, color and saturation. The easiest way to do it in Luminar Neo right now is to use the 50% gray layer. Now it may be going to seem a little bit complex to start with, however stick with me and I promise you that at the end of it, once you do it once, you will be able to apply this technique to any future project. So how are we going to do this? For now let's focus on our layers panel where we're going to click on the plus sign again and let's click on load image. In the sample files, I'm going to give you the 50% gray layer. It's a high definition, 10,000 pixels on 10,000 pixels layer, which is ready for this type of editing. It's coming from our Luminar Neo Power Bundle and more specifically from the Working Match Layer Collection. If you want to find out more about our bundle, just follow the link in the description of the video. Now all you would do here is to select the layer, click on open and it will be added to your My Images section. I already have it ready here, so I simply click on it and wait for it to be added into our layers. Once it's added, it appears on the top of our layers, above the subject and the background, and now we can move back to our layer properties. Here we need to increase the opacity to 100 and make sure that we use the image mapping to fill the frame with the layer. The next thing we need to do is to change the blend mode of the gray layer. For that, simply click on the normal drop down box and navigate all the way to the bottom of the list and click on color. As you can see, by changing the blend mode into the color, the image is now black and white. Now, why did we do that? Well, it removed the colors and removed the distraction. So now we can easily match the luminance between the background and the main subject. By looking at it like this, you can see that the background is much brighter compared to the main subject. So the first thing I would do is to make sure that we zoom out as far as we can, and we can do that by command or control minus. In my case, it's 25%, but you'll see on your computer and screen what you can do. So go as far as you can. And the next thing is to adjust the luminance. Now there are multiple ways of how you can adjust the luminance and brightness in Luminar Neo. However, for this project, we're gonna be using the curves. So first come first, we need to make sure that we have our main subject selected in the layers. And now we can go into the develop tool on our main toolbar. Open it and make sure you have the curves panel open. Here also, before anything, make sure that you own the black and white curves by clicking on the first icon. The next thing I want you to do is to create two points on your curve. One in the upper part, and we're going to use this point to adjust the highlights and one on the lower part, and we will use this point to adjust the shadows. Now again, looking at our example, our background is much brighter than the subject, so the whole point here is to make our subject brighter. So we drag our shadow point up to make the shadows brighter until we get something we like, and then let's adjust the highlights. Now let's see, we don't want them that bright, so maybe we need to bring back the shadows, and I think something like this is looking good. Once you finish with this, I want you to come back to the layers, right click on the gray layer and click on height layer. So now this is the result after we adjust the luminance. Let's see the before and after. This is the before and after, and I think it's already looking great. So now we have matched the luminance and it's time to match the color. So before we're gonna do anything, let's come back to our develop tool and let's apply to the image by simply closing it. So as you can see, it drops into our edits. And if we want to, we can click on the edits tab and make any further adjustments here. So this is our develop tool for the luminance. Let's go back to our tools and let's see how we are gonna match the color. So for this, again, we are gonna be using a gray layer. So let's click on the plus sign and let's select the same gray layer. After it gets added to our layers, we need to increase the opacity. We need to click on the fill to fill it in our frame. And this time we're gonna change the blend mode into luminosity. So all the way on the bottom, click on the luminosity. Now it's gonna make your image a little bit strange. However, trust me, it will help us with the color matching. So two things we need to do first. Let's zoom in, let's zoom back so we can see the full image. And then make sure that you select your new gray layer, go into the develop tool, go into the curves, and now create very simple S-curve. One point on the top, make it a little bit brighter, one point on the bottom, make it a little bit darker, 
just so we can see the colors a little bit easier. So that's about it. Now we can close the develop tool, apply it, and turn our attention back to our main subject. For this, we're gonna select our main subject. And again, we're gonna be using curves for this. First of all, let's have a look at the subject. You see how it has this kind of purples, greens, and orange? Well, we wanna match it with the background. The background is mostly green, little bit of blue, and orange. So how are we gonna do this? Let's open the develop tool, open the curves again, and we're gonna use the red, green, and blue curves here. Now, I don't wanna get deep into the curves, so don't worry about it, just follow me. Let's open the red curves, make one point on the top, one point on the bottom, and now we're simply gonna drag the points up and down and look at the image and see what matches better the subject to the background. So starting with the upper point, let's go up, and look at the highlights. Now, when I drag it up, you can see how they're getting orange and they're getting closer, similar to the background. So maybe not that high. However, I think somewhere around here, we are correct. Now for the shadows, the lower part, let's drag it and bring it up and watch the jacket. Now it's getting more purple. However, we don't want it purple. So let's bring it down and it's becoming a little bit green. Now almost too green or too turquoise. So let's just see, I think actually leaving it the way it was, was probably closest to the final result. So something like this is looking good. Now we're going into our green curves. Again, one point on the top, one point on the bottom, and let's go up and watch the face. Now it's getting a little bit more greener, which isn't a bad thing because there is a green on the image, but we want it just a touch, just a little bit. So something like this. And in the shadows, let's see when we go up, it makes it really green, which is closer to the main subject and the background. And down, it makes it purple. We actually want it somewhere between blue and green. So I think something like this, very subtle, we leave it. And finally, we're gonna adjust the blue curves. So we go there, and now one point on the top, one point on the bottom, let's see looking into the face, going up with our blue curve, um, just a little bit, I think, and on our shadows, looking at the coat down, it makes it less purple, which is a good thing. So I think somewhere around here, we are right. So once we happy with it, let's go in the curves. I think we added too much green into the coat, so let's bring it down a little bit. Once we happy with it, we need to double check what we done. So again, we can come back to our layers, right click on our new layer and click on hide. And this is the result. Now let's see the before and after. And I think it's matching much better together now. I'm really happy with it. Now, once you finish with the gray layer, you can now make few adjustments without it. So you can go into the red curve and see what you like the most and then green curve and a blue curve and so on. However, I'm quite happy with the result. So now we are done with the luminance matching, color matching, and all we have left is the saturation matching. Now, when it comes to matching saturation, there isn't really easy way to do it in Luminar Neo right now. There isn't a gray layer we can apply. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom out as far as we can. So again, 25% at the moment. And now we simply need to close and apply the develop panel with the color matching. And now open it again. And now we can use the simple color tab and here adjust the saturation and a vibrance. So first we're gonna close the curves and make everything nice and visible. And now coming back to our image. Looking at the image, you can see how the background is a little bit washed out and how the colors are not as strong on it. Where we look at our main subject and especially the shirt, you can see how the red is nice and strong. So we basically need to limit the saturation on him. Again, make sure that your main subject is selected. We are in our main panel, we are in the develop tool, and we are in the color section. Here we're gonna try to adjust the saturation and vibrance. So when we bring down the saturation, yes, we adjusting the shirt to something like this, which I think is about right. However, it's adjusting everything else. So sometimes you need to adjust the saturation locally. And for this, you already guessed it, we're gonna use the masking. So first let's focus on the shirt, let's see. Saturation really down to something like this to match everything. And after this, we need to come to our masking, select the brush, and now we're just gonna paint this effect to the certain part of the subject. 
so not everywhere. So keep it on pain, adjust the size, strength down to somewhere around 30, softness you can leave, and now just make one click and that removes the effect from everywhere and it will only be applied wherever you're painting. So paint over the shirt. Maybe we increase the strength to somewhere around 50 and we paint over the shirt here. We make the brush a little bit smaller and we will paint over this part. Again, making sure that it's less saturated, quite like that. Now we can also paint over his backpack. I think here as well, especially this part. So we are removing the saturation from this part, again, maybe around his shirt. And then around the neck on the scarf as well. I think that helps as well. Now let's see before and after. And I think that helps us as well. Again, we can paint a little bit further around his shirt and leave it the way it is. So there you have it. This is how you do the color matching in Luminar Neo. I show you how to match the luminance by using the 50% gray layer. I also show you how to do the color matching by again using the same layer. And finally, we have done some saturation matching and use some masking tool to make sure that we do it properly and it looks as natural as possible. So after this, you could play around with reflection or shadows, or you could also export the image, bring it back to Luminar Neo, make some global adjustments after that to make sure that it's looking even more natural and trustworthy. I'm gonna show you how to do that in some of our future episodes. However, for today, I think this is more than enough. And trust me, once you're gonna try this method once, you will be able to apply it to all your future edits. And now it's time to get your gift. If you wanna get access to our Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, all you need to do is to head to our website, cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift. And there you can download the cheat sheet and start to use it right away. And there you have it. So I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share our video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.